Hello students, welcome to Ipad Sala program. Today we will discuss financial administration, evolution, meaning, scope and significance. This module will acquaint the students with the basic knowledge of financial administration. Financial administration we will discuss first with introduction. Financial administration is associated with development, adaptation, implementation and augmentation of relevant financial system. Promotional and regulatory measures are utilized for strengthening and development of a financial system. A financial system by and large is comprised of a set of interdependent factors responsible for the facilitation and regulation of financial flows in an economy. Factors affecting regulation of financial flows. Central banks, that is RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, and organizations like Securities and Exchange Board of India. Intermediaries like banking and non-banking organizations and other financial services providers. Financial instruments like securities, facilitators like exchange of stocks or commodities, regulations, laws, acts. Fundamental and radical segregation of financial system generates two components at large. That is financial markets and their financial mechanism along with their regulatory framework and factors. Further, segregation of a financial market Yields of money market and capital market are relevant to a financial system. Monetary and fiscal policies. Monetary and fiscal policies pertaining to money and public accounts are on the one hand instruments and on the other hand the determinants. This implies that they are tools as well as benchmarks or measurement criteria. As an instrument, they are employed to influence the performance and behavior of the fiscal sector and economy at large, influence sectors of economy or particular industries. As measurement criteria and determinants, these policies and their structures help analyzing and shaping up business prospectus and investment decisions in an economy. By influencing through restructuring or specifically addressing few vital factors like money supply and budget, monetary and fiscal policies may not only brighten the business prospects in an economy but also control sudden demand enhancement because of increased wage rates etc. Interest rates and taxes also may increase investment and production in certain sectors. This has a relation with motivation of such sectors to adopt certain technologies and production patterns. Monetary policy. Monetary policy has an association with instruments and tools used and controlled by monetary authorities. For example, Central Bank of a country and the Reserve Bank of India in case of our country. Reserve Bank of India in association with other financial institutions and in consultation with Ministry of Finance operates by bringing variations in the cost and availability of credit. This has a triggering effect on the demand and supply of credit in the economy which further impacts the nature and level of economic activities such as production of goods and services on the one hand and aggregate demand for those goods and services on the other. Instruments of monetary policy. Qualitative as well as quantitative approaches are used as the instrument of monetary policy. These are explained in brief below. Quantitative approach. The quantitative approach focuses on influencing and controlling the quantity of credit through bank rates, reserve requirements and market operations. Bank rate or the discount rate is the minimum rate at which the Reserve Bank of India provides financial accommodation to commercial banks positively or negatively which subsequently affect the demand of credit influencing the money supply. A central bank 
RBI in case of India also tends or seeks to influence the economy of the country by increasing or decreasing the money supply through purchase and sale of gold, foreign exchange, government securities, company shares. Maintaining a certain percentage of deposits in the form of balances with RBI's mandatory requirement for commercial banks, which may vary as per the discretion of RBI. Such decision taken within framework of framework with the help of market analysis, hence affecting credit capacity of commercial banks, subsequently affecting money supply. Qualitative approach. Qualitative approach is utilized to influence the direction of the credit in the economy rather than to control the credit. It is imperative to suggest and understand that all the methods and approaches are highly interrelated and sometimes interdependent. It is only a matter of choice to effectively start the process through one of the points and to steer through all others. Fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is related to revenue generation and expenditure planning by government. The tool or the instrument for operating the fiscal policy in budget, which is a plan specific to the level of as much as it can be in terms of expressing government expenditure and revenue, along with the modes and intentions suggesting the direction of economy. The union budget is presented before the start of every financial year by the finance minister in parliament. Properties of budget. The revenue expenditure is related to current expenditure of the government in administration, whereas the capital expenditure includes the capital transactions of government. Revenue receipts are comprised of taxes, whereas external aid, income from public undertaking, income from repayments, and other receipts and market loans constitute capital receipts. The fundamental objective of budget are growth, stability, and social justice. Financial market structure. There are six major components of the Indian financial market, which are number one, money market, credit market, capital market, foreign exchange market, debt market, and the derivatives market. There are few other components like non-banking financial companies, that is NBFC market, the insurance market, the household financial market. With the beginning of economic reforms and liberalization in the early 90s, the major constraints present or existing as barrier to the growth of financial market were diluted through restructuring barriers, which are pricing of the financial assets was controlled. There was restriction on transactions. Lot of barriers were there to entry of financial market. Liquidity in financial market was low and there was unsuitably large transaction cost. The major impact of such barrier was related to the non-integrated and underdeveloped financial markets and inefficient allocation of resources supposed to be channelized through financial markets. Changes brought in response to barriers. The barriers were addressed and changes were brought in these are as follows. Number one, introduction of free pricing of the financial assets. Entry barriers, removals. Removal of other control and restrictions. Improvement in the method of issuance of securities. Enhancement in the number of financial market instruments. Trading improvements. Improvement in regulatory practices and transparency and disclosure practices. Capital market still in the transitional phase of development credit market in India are looked upon as a major source of finance in India. Financial intermediaries providing credits are divided into two major categories, institutional categories and non-institutional categories. Major institutional creditors in India are banks and non-banking financial institutions, which include development financial institutions and other financial institutions and non-banking financial companies including house finance corporations, house finance companies. There are unorganized sources of credit also, which include money lenders, indigenous bankers and sellers for trade credit. Foreign exchange market in India. 
comprises of Reserve Bank of India, authorized dealers, and customers. The domestic debt market is comprised of two main segments. Number one, government securities, and number two, securities comprising corporate debt, public sector, public sector undertaking bonds, and DFI bonds. Public sector undertakings have been issuing term loan, long term bonds which has added new dimensions to the debt market. Whereas DFI bonds have also emerged as an important segment of debt market. Money and capital market. Money market implies short term funds whereas capital market is associated with the long term funds. There are three major components of the money and capital market and these are as follows. The suppliers of the loanable funds, the borrowers and the intermediaries dealing with the lenders as well as borrowers. Money and capital market in India are operating in two forms largely unorganized and organized. The unorganized operations are characterized by lack of formal structure and largely dependent on informal code of conduct followed and set by larger players. Such players are indigenous bankers, money lenders and individuals who are operating in money market as informal intermediaries. Organized operations are characterized by the presence of central bank which controls and propels the policies to be followed and executed by the commercial banks, cooperative banks, discount houses, acceptance houses and even cooperative credit institutions that follow in a subsidiary position or are indirectly influenced by the central bank policies. Functions of money market. Money market plays a key role in channelizing the monetary resources in an economy. The major functions of money market are related to efficient operation of monetary policy, channelization of savings of the society, reduction of, of season, seasonal and regional imbalances in supply and demand of funds, and reduction of gap between borrowing and lending rates. Instruments of money market. Instrument of money market, especially in India, are comprised of call money, certificates of deposit, treasury bills, short-term security transactions, for example, repos, commercial bills or banker's acceptance, commercial papers and intercorporate papers and funds. Capital market. Capital market existence and efficient operation may strongly affect investment in a country through effective and useful channelization of capital resources so as to motivate enterprising investors. Capital market operate on a global level nowadays. The capital market are comprised of institutions and individuals who channelize the long-term policy, uh, long-term supply and demand of the capital. Some important constituents of the capital market are stock exchanges, commercial bank, cooperative banks, saving banks, development banks, insurance companies, and investment trust or companies. India, while aligning itself to the whole of the world and attempting to attract larger foreign investment to provide impetus to the economy, has specifically addressed the policy structure affecting its capital market. Strong attention has been paid to the development of stock exchanges, development banks, commercial banks, etc., by not only addressing the operational efficiency enhancement, but also addressing operational policies and transparency aspects. SEBI in due course has been empowered and has brought in pivotal policy changes. Stock exchanges and its regulation. Securities Contracts Act 1956 says that stock exchange means anybody of individual whether incorporated or not constituted for the purpose of assisting, regulating or controlling the business of buying, selling or dealing in securities. Hence, suggestive of stock exchange being a market in which securities are bought and sold. Securities exchange 
should be prepared for the development of financial markets. An efficient and organized security can offer price continuity and marketability of the stock or shares, transparency and fairness in stock dealings, right evaluation of securities, proper flow and distribution of savings. Apart from conventional stock exchanges, including national stock exchange, which has a large turnover and plays a significant role in Indian stock market, there is OTCEI, that is over-the-counter exchange of India. The fundamental principle of working and objective of OTCEI are same as that of others in accordance with national market. But there is no physical location, no counters, no stock exchange building. The traders, that is sellers and buyers, trade over telephone and through network. This system has facilitated the extension of stock market and services for the whole of the country across the urban as well as rural areas. OTC markets are completely automated, facilitating the transactions through network and telecommunications ICTs. The National Stock Exchange also played a pivotal role by offering efficient, transparent, equal and nationwide access to the investors through nationwide electronic screen based subscribeless and flowless trading system. The most important benefit of NSC since its inception in 1994 to the investor is the provision of access to the same market and order book irrespective of the location in the same time and cost. The investor before NSC came into being had to suffer because of uncertainty and high transaction cost because of the regions such as the involvement of correspondent brokers for securities not being traded in the nearest exchange. Securities Act 1956 The central government in accordance with the Securities Contract Regulation Act 1956 and the Securities Exchange Board of India SEBI established by the central government directs the stock market and regulates the dealing on the stock exchanges as well. After the formation of 1956 Act, exchanges recognized by the government can function. The major objective of this Act is to regulate dealings and transactions through enhancement of transparency in the process so as to present undesirable trade and transactions. 1956 Securities Contract Act provides for the authority to the central government and SEBI as a body constituted by central government under its authority to recognize the stock exchange by approving the bylaws and rules of stock exchange, monitoring the activities and functioning of stock exchanges through calling for and analyzing the returns and operational details, amend rules and bylaws of a stock exchange, supersede governing body of any stock exchange and on the basis of reasons found cognizable. Management of Stock Exchange Government dominates three members to an executive committee or governing body which manages stock exchange. Rules and Securities and Exchange Board of India has played a very important and pivotal role in regulating the capital market of India. Functions of SEBI The major function of SEBI include regulation of the business in stock exchanges and other securities markets, registering and regulation of the working of stake stock market intermediaries, promotion of regulating self-regulatory organizations, prohibition of unfair trade practices in securities market, promotion of investor education, promotion of intermediaries training, prohibition of insiders trading, Regulation of substantial acquisition of shares and takeover of companies. Information collection and conducting inquiries and inspection and audits of stock exchanges, intermediaries and self-regulatory organizations in securities markets. Reform and development measures by SEBI. Some important reform measures and development steps which have been taken by in due course of time are Introduction of free pricing of capital issues, introduction of 
book building mechanism, introduction of electronic trading, measures to widen and deepen the capital markets, improvement of trading, clearing and settlement systems, promotion of dematerialization, measures to reduce counterparty risk, introduction of circuit breakers and measures to increase information flow and to enhance transparency amongst the companies. Such measures have given desired results and have supported in the achievement of the objective of a robust, integrated and efficient capital market structure. Industrial finance and industrial financial institutions. A business enterprise requires capital for different purposes for long term, medium term as well as short term. Sources of capital requirement can be categorized as for short term, bank credit, trade credit, installment credit, customer advances. For medium term, it is issue of shares, debentures, loans, public deposits, profits in the form of retained earnings. For long term, it is shares, debentures, loans from banks and other financial institutions, profits. There came the corporate securities in two forms largely that is ownership securities and creditorship securities. Corporate securities are instruments enabling a large part of credit, large part of capital. Ownership securities as the name suggests are the shares by which the owned capital classified as the sink capital and the venture capital is raised. The types of share associated are equity shares and preference shares. Ordinary shares are called as equity shares in general whereas preference shares are those which have preferential right to the payment of dividend during the lifetime of a company and a preferential right to the return of the capital if and when the company operations are wound off. Creditorship securities consists of debentures and bonds and are instruments widely used by organizations to raise funds. The capital raised is known as borrowed capital and debt capital. Characteristics of a corporate securities Ownership securities Equity shares It gives voting rights It gives differential right as per the prescription Preferential shares These shares can be cumulative these can be convertible. Preference share may also be non cumulative. Creditorship securities. These are debentures, redeemable or irredeemable, mortgage and simple debentures, registered and bearer, convertible and non convertible, redeemable, to be repaid at the specific period or on demand. Convertible are having an option of being converted into equity. Participating Holder to get fixed rate of dividend and right to participate in the balance of profit in an agreed proportion. Cumulative preference share on dividends whether there is a profit or no profit. In case of insufficient profits, the dividends get accumulated with the next years. Industrial financial institutions. There are various types of institutions for financial assistance such as Industrial Development Bank of India, Industrial Finance Corporation of India, Industrial Credit and Investment Corporation of India, Industrial Investment Bank of India. IDBI or the Industrial Development Bank of India as the apex institution coordinates the activities of various other institutions. Some other investment institutions like UTI, United Trust of India, LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India and GIC, General Insurance Corporation of India and its subsidiary make investment and financial assistance. Then there are state level financial corporation as well 
along with state level industrial investment in industrial development corporations for small scale sector there is small industries development bank of india sidbi a wholly owned subsidiary of idbi for promotion financing and development of industries in small scale sector it coordinates the functions of other institutions engaged in similar activities the small scale sector is also catered to by national small industries corporation state small industries and development corporation and khadi and village industry commission k further a large part of industrial finance is catered to by commercial banks types of financial assistance few important forms of financial assistance are rupee and foreign currency loans share and debenture subscriptions underwriting of shares and debentures guarantee of deferred payments and loans activities of development financial institutions identification of industrial potential of different areas development of entrepreneurship through training project identification assistance feasibility studies and project report preparation technical and managerial consultancy seed risk capital assistance etc development financial institution also sponsor a number of technical consultancy organization and some industries for entrepreneurial management development and for imparting education or research in capital market that's all in this chapter